This show is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. The world's in a tough spot. Build your inner fortress and achieve some peace during the chaos. Visit BetterHelp.com allies and get to building. Hello and welcome to the Easy Allies podcast. I'll be your moderator, Brandon Jones. Joining me this week, panelists Michael Damiani. Happy holidays. Brad Ellis. Bah. And that's it. <laughs> the Grinch. It. Bah humbug? <laughs> no, I love the holidays. Blah. Okay. Bah. Uh, we're on Zoom because uh, we're doing stuff remote. I just got back from Florida yesterday. Uh, and Florida's, Florida's flying in the wind, man, in terms of the COVID regulations. So just to be safe, uh, we're all going to hang out, uh, do a lot of remote stuff, and then we'll be back in the studio next week. Also, Bloodworth is on vacation. Isla is on vacation. So it is just these two panelists. And because of that, I've stacked on the headlines and things that we can discuss. We also have two weeks worth of stuff that has happened. Ooh. Granted, it is over the holiday break, uh, so it's not a ton of news, but some fun things we can talk about. And things that are I've tailored specifically for these two panelists. But before we do any of that, we have to talk about the mistakes that we made in the last two episodes of the podcast. Oh. You two sit right there. I'm going to start that corrections music. Oh. Bam. All right. Uh, I forgot to close out Or Wars in the December 17th episode, which I just always do. Uh, we joked about starting an Easy Allies cryptocurrency, but totally re- neglected to mention Don Bucks. Oh, obviously, it would be called Don um, Bucks if we eventually yeah. did it. No plans to do it yet. Uh, I've, I'm, of course, way down, but I have to convince, you know, seven other allies. My custom Darth Vader PS4 that I snagged was for Battlefront 1, not 2. Um, and I feel I don't feel as bad because I, I went to the premiere event, and I think that's why they sent it to me. Uh, the mm. contract from Grand Theft Auto Online is the 10th story update, not the 4th. Apologies. Uh, four of those are t- uh, heists, four of those 10. The Dawn of Ragnarok picture Huber talked about shows Odin riding a giant boar, not an elephant. <laughs> little, su- <laughs> little surprise he botched that distinction but uh, Huber also said emphatically no Assassin's Creed protagonists have ever occupied the same space which is why this uh, DLC that they've added, they added to Valhalla mm. and to Odyssey is interesting you think you got that one wrong? Uh, technically Shay from Assassin's Creed Rogue hangs out with Haytham who is a temporary protagonist at the beginning of Assassin's Creed 3 and I think maybe in a couple other sure. missions and Connor and Aveline have also shared scenes with each other mm. uh, uh. and it's pronounced Leicester not Leicester or Leicester I think oh, I probably Lester, said Leicester England right yeah it's one of those things uh, Boston City pronunciation speaking of Assassin's Creed 3 are also uh, they're tough they're, they're slippery mm. I mess those up on occasion so apologies to everyone who lives there ending corrections music bam This week, we lost a legend in the video game space. Everyone out there who is a giant fan of the NFL, Damiani, I think you probably would know the most about the NFL out of the three of us on this current episode of the podcast. But shout out to anyone who follows the NFL strictly from a video game perspective. Um, this, this, is a, this is a big loss. On Tuesday, December 28th, football legend John Madden passed away at the age of 85. A lot of people are saying... In terms of the NFL, like, the NFL owes this guy. And Roger Goodell and the, you know, NFL coaches and everything are like, yes, of course, he was great. But it's just like, the football would not be anywhere near as well known it is today. Specifically, the fundamentals, the rules, the excitement hmm. around why a team does as well as it does. Why records are so important. Uh, you know, rests on this guy's shoulders. And he was just the, he was the Kool-Aid guy of the football industry. Like, he literally, the cover of Madden 88, he's just, just smashing through. <laughs> And that's just kind of always the vibe that I would get from Madden. Uh, I've picked some highlights from his career for people maybe from our community who didn't know stuff about him. But I'm going to start with a long shot. Do either of you have a story about John Madden or the Madden gaming franchise? Uh, you know, I think John Madden was in Little Giants. Was he's he been in, in a lot of movies. He's been in The Simpsons okay, multiple yes. times. In, like, that's what, he that's like, what I remember yeah. him from. <laughs> he's in Little Giants. He did a cameo in that. Yeah, um, gaming wise, it was probably when Madden came to PlayStation Two, like going oh. into the game oh. store and seeing the PS Two kiosk with 
Madden set up and just seeing how good it looked in person. It, I, I mean, it looks so bad now or so dated by today's standards, but go back in time with me and like, <laughs> it was just mind blowing. I, I I was like, this is the most realistic thing I've ever seen in my life. This is so cool. Yeah. And I'm not sure. even like really into Madden games. Like the only football game I really got into was Blitz. Like everyone else back in the day, that oh. that was like the big one. But Madden was just like a juggernaut. It just like I remember getting it for Super Nintendo. Like John Madden football for Super Nintendo. And I, I I played that one. It was all 2D old school. But, like, for me, Madden's, like, 3D. Like, it's mm-hmm. like for so long it's been 3D, yeah. Let's talk, let's talk about Madden and Nintendo for a second, Damiani. Uh, mm. I'm looking at the list of all the Maddens, and it's, you know, it's not a hard list to decipher. It just literally is <laughs> annual, goes year by year by year. Um, changed names over the years. But there's Madden 64, you know, mm-hmm. an offshoot ex- created exclusively for the 64. It was clearly labeled as like a different version of Madden exclusively for the console. And 3DS also got like its own Madden, Whoa. Madden NFL football for the 3DS. That's interesting. I, did they do that with a lot of sports, Nintendo, over the years? Or do you think it just was so big they wanted their own version on these two consoles? Or? I mean, it was, I imagine it was either a licensing deal or, I mean, starting with Nintendo 64, I mean, version differences because of PlayStation being, you know, CD ROM based and 64 still being cartridge based, so right. there might have been some decisions. I'm not very well versed in the the early history of of, of Madden development to to say one way or the, an, another, but N64 did have a lot of sports games on it. Blood and I actually did a uh, rewatch of some old uh, Nintendo promo videos, and one of them was yeah. Nintendo 64 Sports, and I was kind of blown away. I was like, wow, there really were a lot of sports games mm. on N64. Just no one wanted to play Nintendo 64. Everyone yeah. wanted to play PlayStation, so. Uh, yeah, so I imagine it was, you know, there were plenty of Madden games on there. NHL 95, for some reason, is just always in a collection of 64 games. Like, it doesn't matter hmm. what, you know, what game store you go to. Like, I just, I've, I've seen that. <laughs> Maybe it's just in the li- or our library of game trailers or something. Um, uh, I, yeah, I, it's fun to have as the person who edits some of our reviews but voices all of them. It's interesting to follow your passion through Final Fantasy, Damiani. Follow your passion through the Souls franchise, you know, Brad. And it, knowing I'm not, I'm not going to be the one to review these games. And so I get the script from you and it's like, okay, not only where's this franchise at, where's my friend at with this franchise that they love so much? And I had that relationship with Shane Satterfield for like seven years. You know, like Ooh. I got, I didn't know anything about Madden and then I would get the script from him and it was really interesting <laughs> to be like I'm kind of on top of this franchise right now only just because I get you know I get schooled in it every what is it September when does that thing drop it's just it's August, August it I just think, wins yeah, them, yeah it just like wins the August, August I think it drops automatically like Madden day or whatever they do um it's funny you say that because uh, I've technically never reviewed a mainline Final Fantasy game other than 14 <laughs> Like mm. the single player ones, I, I never, right. I never, right. I never get to, I never get right. to review one. The Legend Damn. of Zelda, okay? Did we do it? Did we? Yeah, you got to review Zelda. Of, that makes more sense, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. There you go. All right. Cue corrections music. Uh, so apologies to everyone who knows this information. Apologies to people who are obviously getting, uh, you know, many mouthfuls of this uh, on multiple podcasts this week because this is a big deal. Um, but football is all about stats. It's all about fun factoids. And I just want to, I just want to breeze through this guy's career because yeah. even knowing how big he was, reading this, like, damn, this guy had the Midas touch. Um, he started on the Philadelphia, playing for the Philadelphia Eagles in uh, 1958. He was drafted 244th. So, yeah, he, he really didn't get to play on the Eagles. And, yeah, and he, <laughs> and, he, and he took an arrow to the knee and was out. He he, yeah. he he messed up his knee and then stopped playing. He started coaching for community college, but then came back into the NFL and the Oakland Raiders. And this is just one of the. This is like the, the one of those series you hear about in movies where they're just like, oh, the Oakland Raiders of that time period uh, became the winningest coach in franchise history, and has a winning percentage of .759, which is the highest among coaches in football's quote modern era. Damn. Um, so the guy just the guy just won more than anybody else. Plain and simple. Um, then, as if that wasn't enough winning, he left to become a broadcaster and won 16 Emmys, and retired like a king in 2008. Um, and, you know, franchise going strong, uh, obviously had a great legacy there. But in gaming, John Madden football premiered in 1988. There's one factoid that I knew going into this, and I'm like, I just need to verify this because I, I remember this being true. Do you, do you guys know about the player count? Have you ever heard that story? No. The first Madden. 
uh, uh, does it not have a full roster of eleven on each team? Like it does, on the field, oh. but, EA, but EA pitched six, maybe seven. They're like, so we have six now. We can maybe push that to seven. And Madden showed in the door. It was like, no, not for <laughs> not for a second because it's not <laughs> it's not football. And I love that. Like the guy doesn't know code. The guy's not playing games. Like he doesn't know how big the gaming well, industry is going to be. How, yeah, how, you know, about, after how, this year. And how still many was did like Tech Mobile have on the screen. I'm I'm trying to like do comparisons here. Like NES, yeah. like. Tech Mobile, I think, had a full lineup even back before that. So. But I wonder if there were a lot more mechanics specific. Oh, I'm talking on my ass. I don't know if there, again, I don't know if like Madden when it came out was much more of like a sim, if you will, of the industry as opposed to mm. Tecmo was just a fun arcadey kind of take. You know, regardless of player account, you just had more options. There was just more strategy, um, from what I understand. Um, but yeah, and so it took three years for development. Came out in uh, 1988, uh, 1988 yeah. which became Madden NFL in 93 after EA got the rights. Um, we're still feeling those rights because it is the it is the NFL football game. Uh, it sold uh, guesses, Damiani. You love those sales numbers. How many, as of 2018, how many copies? Like the whole series? The whole gosh darn thing. Um, <laughs> it's got to be... I'm going to get some... It's got to be upwards of 100 plus. It's got to be like in the top 10, maybe? I don't 130. know. 130. Wow. I'm sure it's up there. Yeah, I don't. I didn't check it amongst other franchises. Uh, Four billion in sales reported in 2013. Jeez. Uh, again, bigger. way more than 33 games, but 33 annually since um, the whole thing started out. Mm-hmm. Have you two heard of the Madden Bowl? Yeah. What's the Is Madden it just Bowl a tournament? A very special tournament. There's, there are Madden it, tournaments, it, it, but this it is It involves the thing. players, yeah. like real players. Oh, and, that's and, sick. And, 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 and haven't they morphed it to, like, game player? Like, uh, yeah. people play the Madden NFL game, and people play real NFL team up together to play it now, I think. It used to be just the players. It bounces around. It used oh, to hi. be. I think I think what you're thinking of, and again, I'm probably getting all of this wrong. Uh, I think the, the, the Madden Bowl is football players now playing, and I think that's, yeah. like, just the tournament. Whoever wins the tournament of a typical Madden tournament or maybe the year or a season or something then plays celebrities and stuff. They used to have just famous like actors and hosts and stuff play. Mm -hmm. And then now it's like primarily uh, um, they do it in the Super Bowl. They do it near the Super Bowl in the host city. It started in 1995. They still do it. And I love that the players can pick any team. So you don't have to pick the team you play. Oh, sure. (laughs) If you're like, no, I want to win this. (laughs) Like, I love that. Um, so that's Madden, man. I mean, the, obviously, you know, you can you can read and read and read about this guy, and, and there's no better time to. Um, but uh, obviously, you know, a, a, a big presence. Um, and maybe as more I think about it, the gr- the greatest gaming celebrity of all time. Like, just sure. Does, does Tom Clancy beat this guy in terms of like people who actually care about Tom Clancy the person? Like, if Tom Clancy suddenly became alive and walked down the street, could you spot him? Like, I know he wears a hat. He always wears Jones. like. Crimson I'll Tide give hats. Mad in the nod because I remember him on the boxes of the games. Actually, there's Tiger Woods. Ain't seen you know, Tom like, on those boxes. Yeah, I mean, the other, like he's been like one of the longest running as well. I mean, I, I, yeah, I, I can't think of any other like people who've had their name on the box. Like he's because he's actually appeared on the box. So it's like, and he said multiple times. You know, when the whole thing started, he's like, I'm excited not only just, you know, football games are fun and football's fun. I love talking about it. But he's like, I'm excited about people learning the rules. I'm excited mm-hmm. for this to actually to teach people about football. I don't know. I don't get that Tom Clancy vibe where he's like, well, I, you know, wanted to teach, you know, spy work and, you know, inside <laughs> yeah. government subterfuge sure, yeah. and all this stuff. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, again, I, I'm probably going to get lots of corrections for people who are like, well, this one person. But uh, I, I just have you know, very little connection to the Madden franchise. And I just know so much about this guy and just, just organically over the years, just being around people Mm -hmm. that loved him so much. Um, A really great quote that I'm stealing directly from Wikipedia. I'm going to quote it directly. Madden once recalled a time in San Francisco when a Philadelphia Eagles player rushed into a hotel room asking, where's Madden? When people pointed to him in the room, he said, no, 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 not Madden, the game. That's funny. (laughs) And he loved it. He was like, that's great, you know. So, like, you were saying something interesting, Damiani, before we went streaming. Where it was just kind of a question of like, how how long is EA going to keep that name forever? Like, how long are people going to know who he was? You know, uh, obviously the next issue of Madden, the ne- you know the next tournament, like the next whole round of this the that that franchise is obviously going to be very reverent towards him. Um, but uh, how do you see that going, just in terms of uh, legacy and longevity? I mean, I, I feel like I mean nothing's off the table, but I have to imagine if it 
continues to make sense. It's going to keep happening because it almost feels like Madden has become synonymous with the football video game genre. Um, kind of like when we say we want a tissue, we want a Kleenex. Like when you want to go roller skating, you say rollerblade instead of inline skates. Like that's like just it just become a it's become a part of pop culture. Now depends on his estate who owns that and like if they want too much money or something. And EA is like, well, we just want the NFL license. We don't like there might be a point where money money can change anything uh-huh. with this, but. As long as both sides are, you know, amicable about the situation, I, I think EA wants to keep it. I think EA wants to oh, keep course. it for as long as Hell they yeah. want. Um, it's just if someone else wants to stop them from using it. EA loves themselves a brand. Um, yeah, I just hope. Yeah, I just hope he is uh, credited. I hope he's he's known. It'd be nice to you know. To oh have, sure. To, to have the legacy passed on because it's again, it's not. It wasn't just big because he had money. It wasn't just big because football's big. Uh, it's big because he was just he was big in, in many senses of the word. Um, and uh, yeah, shout out. Thank yeah, you. Th- out, th- thank you. Thank you, John Madden. Well done. Good show, sir. Not doing as well as John Madden's legacy is Ubisoft's. Um, oh, no. So, you Ubi- yeah, this week in Ubisoft having a hard time. Uh, Stephen Totillo from Axios, a lot of other people are reporting on this, but primarily I was reading the stuff that he was putting out because a lot of it was directly from conversations that he had had with people at Ubisoft who are leaving. And they are calling it, I'm going to call it in the timestamps, the great exodus, but they're also calling it, quote, the cut artery. Oh, Oh, wow. That's bad. (laughs) Yikes. Oh, that's a little more graphic for sure. Um, translation, a, a lot of people are just bailing on Ubisoft, uh, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, Ubisoft has had, you know, has let people go. They have, you know, had franchises that have kind of stalled or, um, games that, you know, Bunk and Evil, Skull and Bones, you name it. Like, there's a lot of weird things happening. Um, but specifically, Far Cry 6, uh, which is Ubisoft's biggest game of 2021, five of the top 25 credited people have left. Uh, 12 of the top 50 from fifth best selling game of 2020, Assassin's Creed Valhalla gone um and ubisoft's montreal uh where i've visited actually i went there um i think when speaking of assassin's creed rogue i think when that came out and toronto studios are each down at least 60 total workers each uh in the last wow. si- in the last six months um quote one developer recently said a colleague mm-hmm. currently at ubisoft contacted them to solve an issue with the game because no one was still there who knew the system Jeez. damn <sighs> nobody's keeping the lights on Wow. Yeah. This adds that to a lot of conflicting opinions, at least that I have about Ubisoft. How does how does news like this hit you, Damiani? Uh, it just shows that they're not that, that they've been bullshitting about cleaning up their act and changing their ways. I mean, they they keep saying publicly, um, you know, their executives keep you know shouting from the rooftops, "Oh yeah, we've addressed this and stuff," and they keep gladly giving interviews saying that they've been doing it, but this tells a completely different story. Like the numbers don't lie here when like they're, they're bleeding <laughs> is that uh, imagery shows us that they're just bleeding talent and talent is not going to stay at a place where they aren't treated like human beings. They aren't treated decently and they have a history of these problems. And they, I feel like a lot of these people gave like in good faith for like, all right, we'll give you a chance to redeem yourselves because they probably love the games they're working on. Some of them might love some of the members of their teams that they're working on. Just like the the the, the people who are causing issues there, they just wanted to see them, you know, expunged from the company. And that's just not happening. So it's like you don't want to waste your whole life there and like keep if you have the opportunity i know not everyone does but you've got the chance i mean i imagine most everyone who works at ubisoft is incredibly talented and gifted and there are obviously places that they can move on to if they you know seeking talent it seems to be um it seems to be just a situation all around that like ubisoft is just not doing the right thing Definitely not the right place to work at, probably for a lot of people. Yeah. It's a lot like um, when, like, uh, it reminds me a lot of Blizzard years ago when people started leaving that studio and they were making their own teams because they weren't happy with what was going on in that studio. And it's like, you heard about the same thing with, like, Blizzard employees going to Riot and said because they're getting paid, like, a good salary. And Blizzard, they're offering them, like, peanuts, essentially. And it's like, Ubisoft's changing as a company not just internally, but like what they're presenting to the public in their games. And a lot of these devs might not be happy the route these games are going now. Like Assassin's Creed is like a 
a more live service kind of thing. I know it kind of is already, but like further down that road, like I don't know. It's like, are we still gonna get sweet games like uh, the Mario Rabbids game, like a sequel? Are we gonna still get cool, fresh games like that? Or are they just gonna keep doing the same old Tom Clancy bullshit right. or something like that that people don't want? Starlink Two, Damiani. Starlink Two. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if that like that. I mean, they can do it on their own, but Brad bringing up Mario and Rabbids, I mean, slightly slight concern for that game. I mean, yeah. it has it has. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it has a schedule and stuff, so it, it's supposedly coming out. But I wonder if you know the the stories keep piling up about Ubisoft. Will Nintendo be like, yeah, we really. We're not going to come back for a third one with you guys. Like, even if this one is well received, it'll just be like, you know, th- th- this could damage some of their business mm. relationships as well because it seems, well, it does not seem any like any company is above reproach when it comes to this. Like, even when other companies are calling out everyone to like stand up, then like a story comes out about that company. So I'm sure all these companies have like, you know, skeletons in their closet. But at the same time, like, until that moment happens, like you, you see a company that's just you know toxic, kind of like to deal with both they both deal with and being toxic work environment. You just you're gonna stay away from that, and I, I imagine there will not. I imagine no matter what, unless like they pull a miraculous turnaround this year, Nintendo's probably not gonna be working with Ubisoft again for a while. Uh, would Which be my is would guess. weird because yeah. Ubisoft's been with Nintendo through like the roughest times. I mean, they're doing, like, Wii U exclusive games. Like, they did Red Steel 2, a game that actually, like, used the Motion Plus and stuff like that. Yeah. Damn. Can you imagine if you were, like, a a hotshot Top Gun developer, you know, like, moving from one company, going freelance, you know, like, you're you're wide open, free agent, and you're just like, yes, let's go. And you are a massive, massive Splinter Cell fan. And then mm-hmm. they just announce, hey, we're, we're, we're breaking ground on a new Splinter Cell reboot, you know, reboot remake. We're starting from scratch. And you're just like, oh, you know, it's yeah. a dream come true. But, it, it, oh, God, do yeah. I want to work there? And a lot of people are, are saying that. Uh, low pay is like the only, you nailed all of them, Damiani. Low pay is like the only other thing that they specifically said was a reason a lot of and like you said Damiani a lot of people said like the whole time I work at Ubisoft was great it was literally just this last year that I'm like I can't I, it's too much mm. I can't take it yeah yeah um you I know Huber I know you care about Huber Brad and Huber cares about Ubisoft are there any Ubisoft games you're attached to any franchises you're kind of like pulling for other than you know, we talked about Splinter Cell a lot recently I'm, I'm like yeah I'm pulling for Splinter Cell I'm I want to be pulling for Skull and Bones Jones because it's a pirate game but what it was before did not interest me at all. Like, I just want, you know, just Black Flag 2.0, just sure. open world pirate game. Just, like, do its own thing. Like, I like Assassin's Creed 2, Jones, but, like, I don't love it. But at this current time, like, Rayman's kind of in the background, so I miss him. Mario Rabbids, yeah, but I don't really care about their, like, shooter stuff, really. I feel a bit of disappointment, maybe. Or at least I feel empathy towards fans of Beyond Good and Evil. I wasn't the big, I wasn't the biggest <laughs> like fan of that yeah. series, no, but two, like, it's got to be no matter what was going on with two, with everything that's going on with that company, like, a even if it's still happening, you really want it to happen at this point with everything that's going on, and, and, and two, with all the departures and talent and some of the stories that come out about the people involved with it, it's, it's you know maybe just re-release the original one in hd one more time so it's easy to yeah. get and like sure, call, it, yeah. call it quits because a movie I, for hbo with all those like, environments and yeah walk yeah away. i mean even the direction two was going i mean that was an amazing cinematic trailer they did but i think they didn't really have an idea what the game was. yeah like it, it was just so nebulous and i think people just wanted like just make a simple follow-up to the first yeah. game and you're probably never getting that they now. probably went <laughs> i think they were too ambitious probably with the original ideas with beyond good and evil 2 like they were with the first game and they had to scale back a lot yeah. Do oh I my god, oh. sorry. I just remembered about the Prince of Persia remake. Oh yeah. yeah. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's that's the thing is like we could we could do this all day. Oh my god. <laughs> do you um do you either of you know what an attrition rate is? It's a, I mean, it's the rate at which something sh- like shrinks like specifically attrition. with employment though. The number oh. of pro- the number of sure, professionals go ahead, go ahead who departed the company in the past 12 months divided by the average number of employees during that period. 
No. So it's like how oh. how fast are you bleeding out, basically? Oh. Yeah. Wow. Um, you do not want to have a higher attrition rate. Uh, you want to have a low attrition rate, basically. Right. You be gotcha. uh, LinkedIn reports on this, so you know trust LinkedIn if you if you care to. Uh, they list Ubisoft at twelve percent. Brad, what do you think Activision Blizzard's at right now? Eleven. <laughs> uh, um, Damiani, do you have a guess? Activision oh. Blizzard right now. Fifteen. 16. Mm. Uh, EA's at 9. Take 2 is at 8. And Epic is at 7. Um, which I'm sure all those companies, and they're probably right, are just like, well, you know, another yeah. day, another dollar. It's just, that's the biz. Um, but <laughs> that was interesting. I didn't know that was ranked. Uh, and it is interesting to actually get raw numbers in terms of, like, why this is alarming. Um, there are many, many more specific details in Totillo and everybody's reporting if you want to read more about this. How do you think Ubisoft responded to these allegations that things are not going well, Brushed just in off. terms of their employment? You don't say. Uh, they claimed that they hired 2,600 workers since April. Their losses are still, quote, within industry norms. Okay. An internal, an internal survey listing, quote, would you recommend Ubisoft as a great place to work? Return to score 74, which wow. Ubisoft said is in line with the industry average. Hmm. There is no war in Bossing Say. Is the- <laughs> <laughs> I understood that reference. Uh, I know it, I use it for you, Jones. <laughs> are they are they delusional, or are they just another win? That like at the end of the day, as long as you can just kind of plug your nose and pretend it's not happening. Uh, gosh, the cynical version of me just thinks that like lawyers or someone in that company are just like this, the, the the analogy we've gone back to a few times, like the auditors who are like, what is what is it going to cost us to be transparent? What is it going to cost us to try and like sweep this under the rug and they're probably like, you know what? In the long run, we'll probably be better if we just ignore this and pretend everything is fine. Watch, we'll, like we're gonna mm. take this risk. Like it's probably the least risk. Like it's the least. Yeah, it's the lowest risk. Sorry, that's what I'm trying to say. The lowest risk for them. Uh, it could be that, or it could just be the really the person or people who are in charge are so delusional and don't want to give up what they have that they're willing to say whatever it takes just to like move on from this uh, this thing they they keep trying to like eh, whatever move like here's positive stuff you don't need to look at don't look at this don't look you know the, well, the they're a publicly traded company so there's no way they're not going to act like everything's a okay they're not going to be like we got a problem here they got shareholders to please they're not going to sure it, it it's crazy to think of 2021 when like all these lawsuits are flying around and I'm like eh and then, like, all these <laughs> people leave the company. It's like, okay, here we go. Like, this mm-hmm. might actually, sure. you know, the lawsuits, them actually going to court, like, is not, doesn't, you know, doesn't strike fear in a lot of their hearts. But, like, maybe this, uh, have either of you seen Broken Arrow? Yes, I've seen it. No. With uh, Christian Slater and, and John Travolta. John Travolta, yep. The uh, nuclear there is a, missile heist. Yeah. Yes, there's a fantastic oh. John Cusack line from this film where he says, I don't know what is more distressing. The oh. fact that nuclear weapons get stolen or the fact that it happens so many times that there is a slogan for it like broken arrow hmm. yeah. and that's how i feel about the great exodus where it's like just a lot of things happening at ubisoft but like five ten years from now they're gonna be like how long have you been at ubisoft like oh, 20 years and just like oh so you were here during the the great exodus I'm like i i was i tell yeah. my i tell my grandkids about that yeah, put that on the company brochure Jones, Um, what's concerning about this to me in the long run is at this point, with all the people who are leaving, all the bad will the company has, you're not going to be attracting the best talent as a company. Of course. All the best people out there aren't going to want to work for you anymore. That's a big problem. That's why people saying Kojima's spending so much, paying so much attention to Los Angeles, why he like really wants to put his foot down here again, you know, after trying to at Konami, because there's a lot of people that are in town might want to, just like Splinter Cell, they're like, oh man, working with Kojima, that sounds like fun no matter what I'm doing. Um, so, yeah, we want them to change. I will keep yep. bringing up on the podcast various different ways that they can maybe sort it think out. about doing it. Brad, it's almost 2022. Ooh. Are you excited for Elden Ring? A little, yeah. Are you familiar with the works of George R.R. R. Martin? Yes. Tamiani. Yo. Are you familiar with this author's works? <laughs> Yeah, when he gets them out. <laughs> oh, there. Well, yeah. Oh, damn. <laughs> the wheels were spinning. We I made kidding. it happen. 
Uh, he's very talented. Yes, he's, he's talented. yeah. He that guy can write. That guy can really create vast worlds. That's mm-hmm. like one of the ten, man. I'm not going to go on and on about Winds of Winter, but I will say one of the reasons it breaks my heart that this book doesn't exist is because I've I've read fewer worlds. There's maybe like a handful of authors that I have read that have created worlds, and I'm like, damn, this is big. <laughs> like, damn, mm-hmm. there are so many people accounted for, which is really fascinating to think of, like how many crazy characters and factions and timelines and stuff like that that he made for Elden Ring. The trouble is, we'll probably never know what the hell he did on this game. And the reason why I'm bringing this up this week, when there's any old week that we can talk about how nebulous his interaction is, is because on December 18th, when we were all in break, he wrote a blog post on his blog called, quote, Long, Long Ago, um, which is short enough for, for me to read in its entirety. And I do so because I know how much Brad is excited about Elden Ring. So you might find some of this interesting. A few years back, Hidetaka Miyazaki and his incredible team of game designers, the creators of the Dark Souls video game, one word, video game, series, reached out from Japan to ask me to help them create the backstory and history for a new game they were working on. Now, video games are not really my thing. Oh, I played a few back in the dawn of time, mainly strategy games like Railroad Tycoon, Romance of the Three Kingdoms, and Master of Orion. But this offer was too exciting to refuse. Miyazaki and his team from From Software, from From Software, he did it, were, build, were doing groundbreaking stuff with gorgeous art, and they wanted what they wanted from me was just a bit of world building, a deep, dark, resonant world to serve as a foundation for the game they plan to create. And as it happens, I love creating worlds and writing imaginary history. So I did my bit and handed off my new friends in Japan, and they took it from there. And years passed. Video games are as big as movies these days. Bigger, actually. Thanks, Gurm, for that. And take just as long to create. But the day of Elden Ring is finally at hand. And I've got to say, it looks incredible. Elden Ring will be released on February 25th, 2022. Uh, Thank you for the fine print there. He also linked to the story trailer and the official gameplay reveal. Hell yeah. Did you, in fact, find that interesting, Brad? Oh, yeah. We knew about this for a while, though, his involvement with the game, about just setting up the mythos of it. We didn't know he played Master of Orion, though. I did not know that, yeah. But it is interesting. Like he, did, None of the dialogue in the game is written by him or anything mm-hmm. like that. None of the dialogue on the show is written by him either in Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> very little. Really, there's not any dialogue where it's like from the book? It just, it's, the, it's got the Harry Potter problem where they're just like, I mean, there are many Harry Potter problems, but it's got the Harry Potter problem where they're like, oh, that was a fun scene. I'll write it into two lines. And you're like, okay. Oh. Like, I remember vaguely what that scene was about, and you do, I'll do a joke. So there's a lot. Dinklage yeah. carried a lot on his shoulders of like, and here's that whole scene in a punchline. Moving on. Um, and of course, when they ran out of book material, it just, you could feel it. Right. You could right, you, right, right, you right. feel that roller coaster start to dip. Um, so yeah, I... How many people are going to buy this game because Gurm's involved? Because he's involved? Yeah. What's the percentage? Dude, I don't know. Like, the idea... I don't think he's, like, his name's on the box or anything like that that I recall, so... Might be on the back. Probably on the back. Yeah, on the back, maybe, but... I feel like everyone that knows about this game isn't going to buy it because he's involved in it. They're going to buy it because it's from software making this. I think it's just like a nice little sprinkle, you know, little sprinkles on your cake or something like that. Just a little something extra. Do you but see this? I don't be- think it's a deal breaker. I was just so curious because we know so little. That, you know, this blog post stands out because he, he doesn't do these. Like he hasn't written. Right. He's it's yeah. just been in interviews or been from software speaking of what he did. Mm-hmm. But uh, would do you think it would benefit from him doing a not necessarily a publicity tour, but like? Do you think maybe they're poking him to say more and he's not? I mean, is this I don't just... think they're poking him to do much. Maybe, maybe like once or twice, but I think they're probably just. I think they were just happy just to have him work with them in the beginning, and aren't really using him as marketing material. Like this blog, like if the furthest marketing they get him out is a blog post, I guess. I don't really expect much poking at George R. R. Martin. Is this yeah. weird, Damiani? I mean. It probably could, uh, I think I'm with Brad, it probably could have been a bigger deal, but I think that would have been more apparent sooner. Um, And just going by his involvement, that it was just crafting some backstory and basically it sounds like some bullet points for the story's direction. Yep. It's not like he crafted the world, like the, like, you know, told him, make these enemies. And like, that's, Brad's right. It's like, it's it's from's, you know, Mm -hmm. like, hands all over it like it's their their fingerprints and their dna is all in it and i think the most you're gonna get is like germ was a thing to get people to pay attention at first because i think they were i mean 
they really didn't need it. So, uh, no, from Soft's reputation, like even doing something ambitious and different, the, that, these that, people that, are that, the world yeah. building masters. You know? Yeah, so it's, to me, it's, it's odd that they needed. It, it like, was just honestly, I bet it was just Miyazaki or something wanting to work with him. That's mm-hmm. it. Sure. Um, it so yeah, so if they if they dropped you know two five ten mil, mil on this, do you think that was like yeah, just go for it? You know, sh- you know, share your oh, success, sure. try things out. Sure. Yeah. And Jones, honestly, as someone who's had their finger on the pulse of this game, I played a lot of it and stuff. It's like no one is talking about George R. R. Martin in this game when you when they're talking about this game. They're not talking about him at all. They're talking right. about the game itself. Yeah. At best, it could have been a wild card where to expand the audience for the game. If they like just something caught on social media, like, hey, there's this awesome game, Eldering. Did you know Germ was involved with creating it or something? Like, yeah, just, just takes one celebrity or something right. tagging him saying that and it spreads. And like, that's probably all. If it wasn't, I think it's more Brad said that they just wanted to work with him because they're like, no, oh, this we're interested in working with him. He's a cool dude and like we like his work. He liked our work. You know, this is like this is gonna work out. If it was not that, this the only other angle I see them playing is that like, oh, this could potentially expand it, but. Yeah. Brad's explanation. I mean, it's not a bad sense. thing to have his name on that. Yeah. No, the guy not that's at all. known for making fantasy worlds. So. Yeah, of course. Yeah, why the hell not? It's just they are just an interesting developer, and so yeah. it's just, there's just yeah. an interesting call. And I'm curious if it's going to play out, or we're going to find out in some like 10th anniversary edition of it or something. They'll be like, okay, let's get down to brass tacks and we'll talk about what he did. Because um, I'm curious. Well, like, he's and, and, and he's such him. an enigmatic presence now yeah. in books and movies and games. And yeah, he is. You know? He's a weird dude now. He's a ghost. But it's just like. He would, he's talked about it before, and he's like, you know, they just send me some pictures from Japan, and I think it'd be pretty... I thought it was cool, and like that's all he would say about the game, pretty much. So, yeah. I've, there's like a, probably a lot of this game he doesn't even know about. It's... It's not like he has yeah. to, like, write the ending to the game. You know, he doesn't have to tell Miyazaki how the game's gonna end, or something like that. It's just, all you have to do is read the first book, Game of Thrones, from A Song of Ice and Fire, and then when you're done with that book... Wrap your head around the fact that this guy worked on Elden Ring and is like, I created some stuff. And you're like, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah, I just set up a mythos, just set up the world, <laughs> you know. And it's cool. I think I think what he set up is cool. Oh yeah, I'm. Sh- it um again, it's just it's 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 like two master chefs making one yeah. meal. It's, it's like what it's, are you? It's just, sick one's when fine. Like that happens. Yeah. yeah, we'll see. Jones, what I like about it is it's not too creative things coming together and trying to be equal on everything that's a good point it's just it's just like him and this little section of this whole big project he has a mood meter on his on his blog posts <laughs> that's this funny. this mood uh the mood for this blog post is quote enthralled yeah and it is a little is a little emoji of of an alien <laughs> blinking i think and hearts are like flowing around that's funny head. That's how he feels. If you just if you want to if you want to know his Dude, emotional it, state, it sounds like this is the kind of stuff he really liked because he likes world building. You know, he, like he doesn't have to think about a lot of the other stuff. Like I don't have to think about right. where these characters go or how their story is going to end. It's if you're awesome cu- for him. if you're curious what else he likes, on the left side of his blog post there are a bunch of tags oh. uh, where you can click on different you know types of blog posts that he wrote. There's over forty tags on the side there. Oh. Elden Ring is not one of them. Oh. <laughs> Ouch. Do you know what it is? What, do you know what is one of them? The NFL. Shout out to John Madden That's for funny. going out into the world and teaching people about this sport. You got Gurm. He's apparently a Giants fan. Quick That's bet. It. Quick bet to think about. Will there be an NPC in Elder Ring that looks like oh, him? Yeah. Yeah. Name like Merg or something? Maybe. <laughs> Probably. Not even just not even voice acting. Just appears like him. Looks like him. Sure. I mean, we'll everyone wears like, fucking masks in those games, so you can t- can't tell. Will it be easy to find them, or will it be kind of, like, cryptic? I think it'd like be trick. really cryptic. <laughs> it'd be fun if he was, like, dead. You found a corpse with a beard. That, like a I feel beard. like he would be into that, Jones. I think he'd be way into that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, either that or, like, full-on brothel. Just co- just covered <laughs> in women. Yeah. Which, again, if you read The Song of Ice and Fire, it will, will stand out. Um, but, yeah, the game's amazing. So, again, it's just all... It's all water into the bridge. Doesn't matter how much you, you spend on that one. That game's going to be great. And now, a word from our sponsors. Zoom in on me, baby. Even in the even in this podcast version, I still get the close-up, even when we're doing it on Zoom. Whether it's saving more and spending less, getting it organized, or losing weight, there's a lot of worthwhile goals to set for yourself this year. At the top of your list 
should be learning a new language with Babbel, the language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions worldwide. I have not been doing my homework. I have this app. I have accessed it. I'm curious to master Spanish or possibly German because Amanda was born in Germany, Spanish because I've lived almost my entire life in Southern California. Uh, shout out to Isla Hink, who's not on the podcast this week, who actually actively has done work. Um, just, like other, just like other sponsors we have with mobile components, uh, there are games in here. And man, I mean, if we have proven nothing here at Easy Allies, it's the game's rule and it's fun to apply them in other things. Not only is learning a new language a fun and engaging new hobby, you can use it while you check off traveling more from your list. The whole Babbel process is addictively fun, fast, and easy. Babbel teaches bite-sized language lessons for real-world use. Babbel's 15-minute lessons make it the perfect way to learn a new language on the go. Just spend a lot of time waiting in airports. It would have been a good opportunity to learn languages. Other language learning apps use AI for their lesson plans, but Babbel lessons were created by over 100 language experts. Their teaching method has been scientifically proven to be effective. With Babbel, you can choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, and German. Never going to try French. But God, <laughs> God, I love hearing people speak it. I heard some people, and I uh, was on a nature trail, and some French people walked by, and I'm just like, God, I could just be a fly on your shoulder listening to that beautiful language. Plus, Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you to improve your pronunciation and accent. There's so many ways to learn with Babbel. In addition to lessons, you can access podcasts, games, videos, stories, and even live classes. Plus, it comes with a 20-day money-back guarantee. Start your new language learning journey today with Babbel. Right now, when you purchase a three-month Babbel subscription, you can get an additional three months for free. That's half a year, six months for the price of three. Just go to Babbel.com and use promo code ALLIES. In all caps, that's B-A-B-B-E-L, three B's, B-A-B-B-E-L dot com, code allies. Babel, language for life. We all shop online, and we've all seen that promo code field taunt us at checkout, but thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds in your cart. Honey supports over 30,000 stores online. They range from sites that have tech and gaming products to popular fashion brands and even food delivery. I was shocked how quickly and easily I was able to spend money over the holidays when it concerned anything regarding my two-year-old. I mean, there's no decision. It's like... <laughs> Obviously, this is why there's so many shows on Nickelodeon. Obviously, this is, you know, this is why, you know, I can't believe Toys R Us shut down. It's like there's so many ways, you know, to get something really quickly. I got a Thomas the Tank Engine game, and it's just like, do you want a $5? $5? And so thank you, honey. Every time that popped up, doing the Christmas shopping, doing, you know, like, it really encourages me to just almost do all of my shopping online because it is always so gratifying. Whether it can make that coupon happen or not, whether it can find something or not, it's always nice when Honey just waves at me from the corner of my browser. It's like, let's save some cash. Imagine you're shopping on one of your favorite sites. When you check out, the Honey button drops down. All you have to do is click Apply Coupons. You wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons it can find for that site. If Honey finds a working coupon, you'll watch the prices drop. We watch so many games load. It's just so nice to see money load. It's like, come on, baby. <laughs> Big money, no whammies. Honey has found us over 17 million members, over $2 billion in savings. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out on free savings. It's literally free. Free? It is not free. It's free, and it installs in a few seconds. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this podcast. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash allies. That's joinhoney.com slash allies. And if you are a patron of Easy Allies, thank you. And Happy New Year! Yay. It's New Year, gentlemen. You know oh, what that yeah. means? You know what that means? Oh, yeah, games. games. Yeah, games. Yeah, announcements. Year end lists. Nah. Oh. For podcast mm-hmm. moderators. Oh, it's it's low hanging fruit. But I feel like I strike gold. <laughs> I feel like I strike gold every time. It's also fascinating, like who does and when. You know, obviously they're NPDs, those take a little while to, to tally. The end of January we'll find out a lot of top selling stuff. But then there's this Nintendo, which just releases a trailer. I love trailers. We're just like, hey, here's a bunch of indie games that, according to us, are like the top or the best. I don't know if that's most copies sold, most money made, most time played, maybe a combination of all of it. But they made a trailer. Uh, and I'm curious to throw all of these titles. Did either of you see this trailer for their top Switch indie games? I've not no. seen it yet. And also, when you talk about top Switch games, it's Snooze, Mario Kart 8, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's like we don't need mm-hmm. to go into that. Um, but it's interesting, especially in this last year, to see not only, obviously, the indie games have performed, but specifically on Switch. Daniel Blurworth loves to say, loves to poo-poo any, any new, like, record that happens. Like, no, duh, Shin Megami Tensei Five is the biggest selling franchise, uh, entry in the franchise. Right. It's on Switch. So I wonder if that's the same tr- as true for, for these games. Cyber Shadow, 
Uh, these are also in the order of uh, just how they were shown in the trailer. Okay. Unpacking which I recommend, recommend playing on PC if you can, but it's still fun on Switch. Tetris Effect Connected. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've heard of these three. Stick Fight the Game. Hmm. I've heard of... I think I know what this is, yes. I have Dominion. seen something Stick for it at some point, yes. I haven't played it. How often do you cruise the eShop, Damiani? How often do you just take a, get away? I mean, I did just recently because this... I think maybe I did, did not watch this trailer, but saw it tweeted because it, I think it also included like there was a, a there's an indie sale that was going I think it's over now um, that there was indie world sale uh, for any mm-hmm. game that was mentioned yeah. in the most recent indie world was right. on sale uh, and I went through that list and uh, unfortunately while it was not on there it was on sale anyway it was Death's Door because I told Huber I would oh, play it that, and yeah. Yeah. Death's, yeah. Death's Door is not a you know that's you know Sorry, Death's Door. You you yeah. you're, you're you're not in the. You know, <laughs> yeah. What am I thinking of? You know, it's just like oh, you know, you know, little known game does good. You know, that is not Death's Door at this point. Like many many people are talking we used about to, that. Used to do this on Friend Go's opening segment for a little while. Like, what were the top uh, eShop? Because it has the category for best sellers, and you can see like what the top like twenty or ten twenty. Mm. And I used to ask like what the top five were, and I had to. I'm just picking out this guest. Yeah, but from you and your old. Uh, friend code segments. Oh, is that the show that's behind you, Damiani? Is that your, your show? Yeah. I love that the drink. <laughs> forgot to change it. <laughs> Move your head to the right just a little bit. I love that there's the bottle there. I love that there's the San Pelli. Yeah, it's yeah. part of the set. Yeah. Accurate. Pikachu and San Pelli. It's a good time, that friend mm-hmm. code. Um, Curse of the Dead Gods. Shout out to Huber. Oh, oh yeah. Ender Lilies. Yeah, oh, yeah. good game. Hmm. Good speak, Metroidvania. S- speak of it. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I think Isla was praising it too. Doki Doki Literature Club Plus <laughs> exclamation point uh, Spelunky Two yes. oh, yeah. R- Road Ninety Six, which a lot of people are saying oh, is yeah. one of the kind of the exclamation points on this list. They're like, I'm familiar with that game, but I didn't think I'd expect I would be it to seeing sell, it in this video, yeah. yeah, as well as these other ones. Sorry. Uh, and you mentioned before, Damiani. Not only was there a sale, there was a sale on like all these games. So it's not, you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's not Big that sales, mystic, yeah. you know, kind of like why this happened. But uh, I am curious to see which one of these games stand out. Subnautica and Subnautica Below Zero, Brad, which you put a frame trap, right? Yeah, I beat uh, Below Zero this year, actually, too. Oh, cool. I'm caught up, baby. How did that hold up to the original? Uh, or the, good. Or it was the previous different. content? It was different enough. Um, Little Wood, one word. Little Wood. I'm blanking on this Ooh. one. Brad, anything? No, I don't know. Got him. I intentionally didn't look these up because we're talking about the top Switch games, so I thought Damiani would be coming in with Islanders Console Edition. He knows what that is, right? Islanders what? Console Edition? Islanders, Islanders Console Edition. Okay. This obviously means that this game came out on a different platform before. Mobile before, these, before maybe. These indie games are getting big sales despite you, Damiani. Slime Rancher Portable. Okay. Plortable oh, edition. Yes. Okay. Plortable edition, which Google Docs really wanted to correct, but I wouldn't let it. Eastward, which mm-hmm. is getting yeah, a lot of buzz. You know about Eastward. And Axiom Verge 2. Mm-hmm. Which is one of those that you kind of have to check the math to be like, yes, that is an independent game. But is that, you know, it's just kind of like Death's Door or something oh. that's coming with such a pedigree. Got and un- and unlike a Cyber Shadow or Curse of the Dead Gods isn't trying to like, you know, kick off a new IP. They've, they've really done that with a lot of success. Um, so yeah, anything... Just looking back, you mentioned Road 96, but was anything like truly shocking on this list? Or is, are we are we agreeing with blood that, hey, if you can get your indie game, your franchise sequel, your whatever, if Nintendo calls and they say they want that Bayonetta 3 exclusivity, you should seriously consider I it. I guess it's good to hear some of these games I didn't expect to sell so well. Spelunky 2 had timed exclusivity, which a lot of people saying worked out yeah, really well. Yeah, but me. like, Ender yeah. Lilies, I didn't expect really to be a big game or anything, but hell yeah. Same with Cyber Shadow. That game's sick. Do you feel the power of that? Are you holding it in your hands right now, Damiani? A Nintendo Switch? <laughs> I'm, I'm just curious to see what the what joy on the you got eShop, on that thing? if any of those are in the best sellers right now. Let me see I'm the joy cons. What joy cons you got on that? Oh, this is the oh. Yeah, why don't you hold it? Okay, okay, nice. Yeah. The the the, the, Emmy the white ones. But yeah, uh, best sellers right now. Sorry, I know this is not what you plan, but I I, I just want to see if there's any, what's the be- highest placing indie game is on here. Nice. Uh, Among Us. Ah, if sure. You want to count that, and then, I mean, if you want to count Overcooked, I mean, Among Us is number four right now. Overcooked's five. I'm like, here to promote Overcooked. Those were for not sure. in there. Yeah, Overcooked two. Uh, Stardew Valley still doing very well. Yep. Oxen Free. 
This is why Brent, Hades, because yeah. Hades just got the Hugo Award, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, God, spoilers, sure. Stick I'm fight, stick fight me. It is on here. It's a uh, number twenty. Oh, stick fight me. Or sorry, stick fight the game. Sorry, there it is. Okay. I misread it. I'll stick fight you, Damiani. I don't yeah, care. Yeah, and unpacking <laughs> right here. Unpacking yeah. twenty three. So yeah, they're 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 charting very pretty well. I, I would say, Brad, the mm-hmm. Switch games don't look as good as other consoles. Conversation is dead and buried. Like it just doesn't. Uh, to an extent. For a lot of indie games, it doesn't matter as much, but for other things, it sure as hell does. Yeah, but I mean, I th- I think consumers are, I don't know if like a lot of consumers oh, get duped I mean, by that. I wonder how Guardians runs. I know uh, the GTA well, Guardians Trilog- is like the GTA Trilogy game. does not run well. I was excited to play GTA Three on that over the holidays, and then I was like, mm-hmm. ooh, this runs horribly. Yeah. Let me play that on PS Five before I go home. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, when you have like Overcooked, there's so many games that just yeah. don't, you know, that don't need it. Um, necessarily. I mean, true. There have been they some smaller titles that have had performance issues on Switch, though, um, that were either cleaned up or they attempted to clean them up. Um, one of them, because I didn't review it on Switch, but I tried it out, was uh, that that uh, a few years ago, Rhyme, because mm. I played that, I believe, on PS4 or PC version of that, which ran pretty well, but the Switch version was you know not in a very good place at launch so i think it yeah you're right generally jones i think but if a customer jumps into it and it starts not running very well they're gonna be like "Eh, what's up with this yeah Yeah. pokemon brilliant diamond and shining pearl which of course are multi-platform uh you know strangely did not work uh, really well on switch (laughs) um, which a lot of people are reporting yeah those see the pokemon you get those in every console pc pc players they love that pokemon franchise yeah they sure do yeah that's why they had to make their own version whatever it's called that, uh, so lost right Tim now. Tam. You okay, <laughs> there, you okay there. Damiani? Wait, you, I thought you said Pokemon Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl are multi platform titles. Like, wait, they're multiple not? multiple systems. They're not? You're telling me that Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl are exclusive Did to I the Nintendo the Switch? Bait? I fell for the bait. But I'm hearing all wow. sorts of reports that those aren't working well. How can it not work well? Wow. If it's made it's... exclusively. It's a big franchise. Yeah, what? See, again, Brad, it just doesn't. Doesn't matter. Especially for all these games, I can't, you know, mm-hmm. I can't really think of any things, that, any one of these that would be well, compromised. It's, it, it's got the handheld factor, Jones. People give it a break. It's a having boon. you played Subnautica on PC, both versions. <sighs> would you see that? Could you imagine that being fun on the Switch? Uh, As fun? Fine. I don't like playing in handheld mode. I just don't like playing games like that. For people who do, yeah. And it's just, you know, oh, if you only got a Switch, hey, at least you can still play it. Would love to see if they have any internal research because they do about household data. But the whole mobile thing, like, we've just kind of, like, bought into it. And, like, it's been, like, the mantra and the, and the, or the, the MO, sorry, of the, mm-hmm. the Switch. And while it's it does have selling power, part of me has to wonder at this point if it's not it's not the handheld option that's bringing people in. It, it's, uh, you know, great I mean, library. It's, it's not the, like, yeah, it, it, it's library, but also, like, you can get a Switch Lite for so cheap or OG mm-hmm. Switch for, like, you know, cheaper than the other consoles um but also like kids like adding an extra system to a household i think mm-hmm. that's what nintendo was sh- always shooting for is that price point and oh, yeah. making it more durable and yes handheld for like a kid because a kid wants to take wherever they want to go like it's not it's not for our version of like why we like it being handheld because like oh i, I want to do a travel with it it's like I- I- kids generally like you know they don't stay still they don't stay in one place all the time so like hooking up a console and stuff only works for so long then they want to run off and go do something else like they, they're just toting that switch with them all over the place and stuff like i, I even was told uh, like uh, my nephew's really into video games now and uh my brother and what was telling me like oh we're we're gonna get him a switch next holiday season like it's too soon for him but like we we want to get him one because like it, it like we ch- we want to get over the other systems because he gets he gets, he's all over the place and like where's he gonna get him the one like which one like we'll ask you the question which one we should get i'm like oh the switch light like get, get him the switch light that's nice and durable all in one piece so you don't lose a joy con or something and like you know they just, just drop the thing with, like you know step on it it's probably not gonna break whereas mm-hmm. like console it's like you you want to spend five six hundred dollars on something you know for a little kid i i i think that's like part of like such a big deal with switch honestly it is like rethinking what we mean like when it's like when it's portable it's like durable i think is another point to add sure to it. yep <sighs> grinding and shin megami tensei 5 portable mm. Mm. on a plane <laughs> oh 
fantastic. <laughs> I watched Fast and Furious 9 and played Shin Megami Tensei 5 at the same time. Just nice. grinding. Just Let running in circles and grinding. Jones. You know, like I fought all these demons before. Does SMT5 have auto battle? And if it doesn't, do you wish it does? Oh, oh it, it does. definitely <laughs> does. Oh, it does for sure. But one of the things that's great about SMT5, just to, we're talking about Switch games. One thing that's great is I don't, it's a button press. It's not a setting that you just, it just does it every time. Uh, you have mm-hmm. to tell it and it prompts like, are you sure? So it's a, it's a, it's Y and then A. And what I'll do is because um, my understanding of Shuma Gun Attention 5's battle system is you hit that elemental match and then you get more turns. And so the first two or three turns of any battle, I'll do all of those manually just to get the guys going and the setup, then yeah. battle. And then, okay, go. You know, it's like, I don't, you know, they're all weak enough or I took out the one tough guy. Um, mm-hmm. So I did a little mix of both, you know, works out. Um, but yeah, go switch. It's just kind of fun. Kudos to Nintendo for coming out with that stuff. And yeah. um, it's funny you mentioned Switch being good for kids. Milo grabbed it off my desk. I come into my office and he's just about to boot up SMT5. I'm like, I think I'm fighting a spider demon right now, buddy. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if, <laughs> I don't know if that's your cup of tea. But just like Dami, I said, when he's three, oh yeah, time to catch some demons. And I got more lists. I ain't stopping there. Oh. Uh, I don't recall which allies were on the podcast when I talked about a weird Steam list where somebody, where, where a independent, I believe it was Steam ID, uh, is an independent team other than Valve that uh, tried to discern what they think is the, what makes a good Steam, like a top Steam game. They're mixing mm-hmm. up all sorts of different metrics. Okay. And a lot of the comments on that episode were like, what? That is a weird list. It was kind of like the Steam Indie list. I want to see if any names stuck out. Well, Valve is here, and they got their top selling, their top new releases, and their most played. Oh. And predictably, there's there's just not a lot of surprises on this list. But I still have them. Um, so do, should we go? Brad, you like lists. Should I go through all of these? You just want the top selling? And no, we maybe let's see go if anything through. Stands out? How long is the list? Is it 10? Yeah, it was like 10. There's like, oh, yeah. Just like let's a go through it. Um, and again, these are in no particular order. Uh, top selling, Apex Legends, yep. PUBG. Counter Strike Global Offensive, Battlefield 2042, which may be a little bit surprising. Mm-hmm. Uh, Naraka Blade Point, who, se- who sent us a, a fantastic Christmas yeah. present that I'm bringing into the studio next week. Thank you, Naraka Blade Point. Not a lot of Naraka coverage coming from Easy Allies. Dead by Daylight, uh, Destiny 2, New World, Brad, which is nice. Which I'm gonna actually, my, my buddy's finally jumped on our server. I'm gonna start spending a little more time there oh, next okay. year. Uh, Rainbow Six Siege, Felheim, Dota 2, of course, and Grand Theft Auto 5. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So yeah, nothing free to play there. games on yeah. there. No uh, nope. usual no suspects. There. Most reads like a top Twitch categories list as well. <laughs> Close. <laughs> what are the most usual suspects, Damiani? Three of those have been running for six years. Top sellers. Well, I mean, six Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft Auto so obviously, one of, one of them. Um, sorry. Uh, Two more. You don't need me to reread this list. Yeah, you do. Cause they tell me forget. what are the two. Other than GTA Five, biggest games on uh, Steam. I mean, I mean it's just like not League of Legends. <laughs> I mean, and not PUBG. Sadly, I bet PUBG wishes they were in that top. Apex, uh, Dota Two, and CS:GO. Oh, Dota Two. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 running. Of course. Yeah, I was gonna yeah, say because yeah, they they've been. I was like, which are the longest ones? I was like, keep forgetting. I forgot CSGO about CS:GO a for a minute. I forgot you said Dota Two. That was the one I was blanking. I was like, you said one obvious one. I can't remember its name right now. And it's like. Yep, 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 yeah, yep. it's been around forever, and CS:GO, man, just gonna feels keep like going forever. Feels like that wasn't that recent, but it, it is, or it was recently, but it's not. <laughs> yeah, CS:GO's uh, old, man. <laughs> PUBG and Rainbow Six Siege are for five years, and Destiny Two is three because they couldn't be on the list because they, they were on Battle.net until right. 2019. Oh yeah. Um, but again, Ubisoft, just shout out to the whole Rainbow Six team. I hope you're all enjoying your jobs, mm-hmm. and, um, because it definitely has a uh, looks like a bright future. The top new releases, specifically just this last year, Age of Empires 4, Back for Blood, Forza Horizon 5, Outriders, Valheim, Halo Infinite, Resident Evil Village, Battlefield 2042, New World, Mass Effect Legendary Edition, Naraka Blade Point, and Farming Simulator 22. Good old Farming Simulator. Yeah, good old Farming Gotta have that. Um, Noticed a few uh, Microsoft entries on that list right Uh there. Yeah. Seem to be uh, doing pretty well on Steam, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. The times are a-changing. Um, and especially, too, like Sony getting a lot of their stuff, you know, like on PC. It's like, yeah, mm-hmm. get on these lists. We'll see. We'll see. Interesting to see how these uh, lists will change, as predictable as they can be. Um, and the most played is, like, basically the same list. 
as Dota 2. All yeah, Dota 2, Counter Strike, CSGO. New World, CS:GO, Apex, Halo Infinite. Um, in, even in just that short amount of time, yeah, uh, Halo yeah. Infinite, Grand Theft Auto 5. Two others that we have not spoke of until this point. Not top Ooh. new releases and not top selling, but most played of Minecraft. Is that on there? No, I don't. Yeah, I don't think Minecraft's on um, Steam. I'm not sure. I think you guess have to go one, Microsoft it, it to get it. It, it peaked, but I don't know if it would make the top 10 list. Did 14 make that list or no? No. No. Oh, uh, Team Fortress 2? No. But Damn I know it. your love. I know your love of that franchise. Rust. Was oh, oh Rust. gosh, okay. Rust. Okay, makes sense. And Cyberpunk 2077. Wow, okay. Oh, yeah, of course. Because it's Black, not a short game, so it yeah, doesn't, it's yeah, not. doesn't mean a lot of people are spending money on it or it's, uh, you know. Oh, a lot of people bought that. And, and it did not Steam. come out this year, but a lot of people uh, spending time. With the cyberpunk, and there you go, Steam players. There are your top games in 2021. Nice. This is too big for also this week, which we are rapidly approaching. But it, the CEO of Roadblocks is doing oh. some pretty tricky taxes. Uh oh. And, and oh. it's gonna and it's gonna take a second to explain. And I'm not really expecting a long conversation. Rich people math coming up. Yeah, it's just funny. Rich people math is so funny, and it sucks. But here we are. And I think you, as the listener of the Easy Allies podcast or our viewer, you you should have this information. The New York Times is leading this story. Uh, all of the, what I'm about to say is completely legal. This, he has not done anything. He's not in trouble at all for this. Mm. I don't think the board with these articles getting written is going to make his life tougher. Of course, I speak of David Buzucki, who is the CEO of the Roblox Corporation, which was founded in 2004. There's a tax cut from the 90s called the Qualified Small Business Stock, or QSBS, which is so fun. (laughs) Yes. It was created to promote investments in startups by shielding company profits from taxation. So they're like, not only do we want you to not have to deal with taxes, people who invest in your company, we don't have to have to deal with taxes either. Uh, Originally, when it was written, it was for half of profits up to $10 million, and then they later changed that to just 10 mil. You just, for 10 mil, you don't have to worry about if you're investing in a startup. When the Roblox Corporation was founded in 2014, it, or 2004, it qualified for QSBS. Uh, this means that it had to have assets at or below $50 million. Uh, as a Disney fan and a Mighty Ducks fan, I think, Brad? Mighty mm-hmm. Ducks fan? Yeah. Uh, of the, f- the film and maybe the new uh, Disney Plus, I don't know if you're that familiar with the Anaheim Mighty Ducks, the actual hockey team. Yes. Disney, when Disney created the Anaheim Mighty Ducks, they specifically set them at a fifty million dollar value. That's funny. And I didn't Congress, know that. And Congress was like, wait, 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 wait. And they were like, You're not <laughs> Disney. Yeah, Disney's not going to qualify. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so, so they were like, okay, let's be very clear, which is just funny. Um, it's like weird Disney things come up with John Madden's history. It's like, there's mm-hmm. like yeah, there's always some weird Disney story about them doing funky business. Um, the problem with it is you can gift stocks to friends and family. They qualify, but you still control the cash. You still are, oh. you can create this web, which you can maybe disguise, or if you're Buzucky, you do it 12 times. <laughs> uh, it's called stacking. Um, his mother-in-law started doing it last year. <laughs> <laughs> Roblox stacking. Roblox, so wholesome, man. Um uh, politicians know this sucks. They know they shouldn't do this. They are actively trying to change it. The cost of that effort is estimated at $60 billion over the next decade. Wow. Cheers. <laughs> to to Bazaki. Okay. You know, Star Trek, they name maneuvers after f- uh, captains. They got Riker maneuver. They got a, you know, Picard maneuver. This is the Bazaki maneuver. <laughs> He will go down in history. Kudos. You know, that's uh, impressive. Also, in the past two weeks, <laughs> dun, 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 Nintendo eShop had some server issues on Christmas there, Damiani. They are, uh, of course, this, fixed now because stuff comes and goes. It always happens. All the mm-hmm. companies like warn that there's going to be like a lot of congestion on Christmas Day. We didn't get uh, any like DDoS attacks, though. That happens sometimes. No, it's, it's, it's a surplus of people getting new consoles, rushing on. Right. Like Everyone goes on that day to buy stuff or gifts with their new consoles, so they just see heavier use. But yes, you are right. It, 
I there just, hasn't yeah, been any attacks. Xbox Live and PSN, those have gone down legendary times. Yeah. <laughs> thank, thank you, hackers, for giving us a Christmas. Uh, the Amiga A500, which no one in Easy Allies really cares about, will be out on March 25th. It's going to feature 25 games. I don't know what those 25 games are. Moving on. The Hugo Award will give out uh, gave out their first, first best video game to Hades. Mm-hmm. Um, be, due to pandemic and maybe development time, you know, the staff couldn't go there. Uh, Greg Kassavin? Mm-hmm. Kasman. Uh I always want to say Kasavin. Um No, it is Kasavin, I think. I think Kas- it's okay. I think it's Kasavin. Um uh who's a wonderful guy and they're a great team. Yep. Uh re- recorded a video but he couldn't be there in person, which is a bummer because because it is the Hugo Award, because it's typically such a liter- just a literature thing, I really enjoy Greg, like, you know, like smoking a pipe and being like in a library setting or something. And they're like, I really liked the portrait of Zeus. You know, like, <laughs> I, I would love for him to have those conversations mm-hmm. with literary giants. Um, really good writing in that game. Team 17 is no longer publishing the first person shooter Ready or Not uh, because a level apparently focuses on a school shooting. Mm-hmm. Um, you are SWAT members, so you are probably going in to stop this. Obviously, no details or anything. It was a very amicable, amicable split, but it's just interesting when you have like a level of a game that like publishers out. Um, Danny Trejo is now starring in two free Far Cry Six missions. If you missed that over the holidays, Hot Wheels Unleashed announced a million in sales. Yo, I job. want more DLC Hell for yeah. that. I want more. Yes, you've gotten like three DC updates. Like they're yeah. Thank you. Uh, Battlefield 2042's first season reportedly won't be released until March 2022. Ooh, <sighs> wow. That's so Reportedly. Long. It hasn't happened sooner, yet. Yikes. No details. Uh, that came from Michael Huber via Slack uh, with an emoji of a <laughs> <Source>. facepalm. <laughs> Huber's the source, everyone. No, just kidding. So Huber, yeah. Uh, Daybreak Games is now developing and publishing Magic the Gathering Online, which uh, Bloodworth was surprised to find out has been around for a super long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, Final Fantasy 16's development has been delayed by half a year. Uh, at least we found out, I think, before the end of the year what was happening. Yep. But they said we're finding out in spring 2022. We're going to get our next... We'll see it, yeah. Our next glimpse. Yeah. That was expected, honestly. Yeah. When Which we got is why they make it a headline. Year. Yeah. yeah. The one small thing, the explanation he gave, I've seen some people, you know, maybe, like, everyone's been mostly in good faith, but I've seen some people ask, like, well... Why, why did it take so long to get this pipeline figured out? Because in 2020, they had to figure out the Final Fantasy 14 pipeline because 14 got delayed. Like, all of its content updates got a permanent delay by three months. That's why the expansion came out so much later and then why all the like all the patches that were supposed to come out after were delayed because they had to work through that system of remote work. It wasn't They weren't really set up right. for it. So him and a bunch of other teams set that up and that was within Square Enix. If you read the message that Naoki Yoshida gave out, he's talking about outside uh, organizations they're working with. So obviously, they're working with third-party entities to work on this big game. It sounds like not all of them are as well-equipped to deal with work from home as they are. So it sounds like they've run into some speed bumps with that. So, yeah, people are like, well, didn't Square Enix already do this a year ago? And now they're doing it again? It's like, well, it sounds like they don't want to pass the buck. They don't want to throw anyone under the bus. But they're also like, yeah, we work with other people, too. And, you know, we just ran into some issues. It's like, yeah, it sounds like. And also, hmm. this dude's not going to let this game come out unless it's like, looks good. The next time yeah. it showed off, next like, time we uh, see it, this spring reveal, we have to see game, like we have to see HUD gameplay. Mm-hmm. Like, I think it's like, you, you yeah. like he understands the, the expectations. Yep. Riot Games reached a $100 million settlement. 20 mil is that is, of that is going to lawyer fees. The rest is going to all the female employees involved in the suit from 2014 on. Hmm. So, yeah, uh, yeah nice. that worked out for them. Sonic's Green Hill Zone Lego playset goes on sale on January 1st for 60 